there is no way Joe Biden will be allowed to remain the nominee for this next election. There, there's just not. But he's too selfish, he's too arrogant, egocentric, and honestly too senile to ever drop out on his own or listen to anybody for anything. This guy has always thought he was the smartest person in the room. You know and I know what we're talking about. I have to be perfectly honest with you. I, you sit there and you have no idea what they are talking about. I have no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> he actually thinks he's still got it, which is hilarious, especially because they won't even let the man use the big staircase on Air Force One. Every president, since the plane was commissioned, I think, uses the big red carpet stairs to enter at the front of the plane. They turn around, they salute everybody, and then they get on board. Except this guy. They're putting him in the cargo hold. He's shaking hands with no one, tripping all over the place. He always seems confused. He can't put on his jacket. Not all the lights are on upstairs with this guy. But all the Democrats are ignoring it for now, hoping that no one will actually see that he belongs in a nursing home. Notice how they're all propping him up for now. He can do it. And I see Joe every day. I see him out, you know, traveling around this country. I see his vigor. I see his energy. I see his passion every single day. Our perspective is that it's not about age. It's about the president's experience. That's what we believe. And it's, you know, as they say, the proof is in the pudding, right? The president has used his experience to pass more bipartisan legislation in recent time than any other president. That's just a fact. We have a president in Joe Biden who <coughs> is forward thinking in a way that we've not seen in a long time. He was that good, they wouldn't have to make all that stuff up about it. This is not going to last long, trust me on this one, folks. This is going to be one of the greatest circumventions of democracy from the party that constantly tells us that they're defending democracy. Defense, protection, and preservation of American democracy will remain, as it has been, the central cause of my presidency. For a long time... We told ourselves that American democracy is guaranteed, but it's not. We have to defend it, protect it, stand up for it, each and every one of us. These people have the same commitment to democracy as they do to securing the southern border. I, I bet they're going to leave Biden on the ticket until the absolute very last second, post-convention, and then the same people that are essentially running his administration anyway are going to swap him out for someone new. I don't know, maybe 25th Amendment, maybe through pressure on Hunter. Who knows how, but th this is what they're going to try to do. It who's it going to be, though? Look, Kamala Harris has demonstrated she's basically not an option at all. I mean, she would be the greatest gift in a bow with for Republicans in this next election. But here's a few others. Look, everybody's looking at Gavin Newsom right now after he ran over the kid when he went over to visit China. But who is trending today? Michelle Obama. And just recently, old Barack posted a happy birthday message on Twitter saying, I can't wait to see what this new decade brings you. Raise some suspicion here. I, like, how many first ladies have peaked after they leave the White House? Next decade? Kind of hard to top that. So what is Barack talking about? Is it a run for the presidency? I, I mean... That would put Barack back in the White House, and we all know he's integrally related to everything that's going on now in Biden's term anyway behind the scenes. Look, we know the Democrats are committing to diversity, and if that supersedes any type of qualifications or anything. So I'm not putting it past them to try this. I think it would be awesome for Republicans, but a lot of Democrats think she might be the magic bullet against Donald Trump. I don't think she actually wants to be president, like actually doing the job. She would, of course, enjoy the celebrity side of it. This woman has mansions all over the country. Hawaii, Martha's Vineyard, they got a sweet place in D.C., just to name a few. The, the same people who told all the other rich people for their entire term that you shouldn't have a big house, you can only have so much, they told everyone else to pay their fair share and that the seas were going to rise from climate change. And yeah, turns out they have a bunch of multi-million dollar oceanfront homes. Yes, homes, plural. Now, with that in mind, let's say she does run. I mean... This woman has never had any policy experience. How's she going to answer that reporter when they ask her that? Seriously, this is the extent of her policy exchanges. When they go low, we go high. Rolling up your sleeves, not worrying about what people are saying about your initiatives and your programs and do what you think is right. A lot of people have asked me, when others are going so low, does going high still really work? 
My answer, going high is the only thing that works. So when people ask me, is, is it still time to go high? And I, the answer I give in the book is yes, always yes. She's got those and a few other catchphrases up her sleeve, but she doesn't really have answers to anything. The one initiative she had as first lady was school lunches. Now, this woman ripped every calorie rich thing that kids actually like to eat out of cafeterias. She pushed in vegetables and fruit, targeting low income areas. Look, noble concept, I get it. On paper, it seems smart, but as with most democratic policies, nobody thought this through. There was no brain room behind this. Turns out most kids don't actually like fruits and vegetables. Weird, I know. Anyone who actually has kids and actually takes care of their kids knows this very well. So what happens? Those kids didn't actually eat any of it. Their families resorted to alternative foods, which in low-income areas, processed junk food is cheaper than healthy food. So kids ate more of that, and voila, right here. The same time that Michelle Obama imposed her single policy of eight years as first lady, childhood obesity went up. These are the questions she's going to have to answer on the campaign trail. She's never had to debate policy before. She is a social icon for a lot of people, not a president, not a politician. People are going to see right through her catchphrase in like five minutes. You know what else she's going to have to answer for, given the fact that her husband basically campaigned against the top 1%, is how did they become part of the top 1%? Now, while Democrats continue to sink millions of dollars into investigating Donald Trump, his financial history, attempting to find anything they can possibly to use as leverage against him, nobody is talking about Obama, who got rich immediately after leaving office. Here's something she's going to have to explain, too. I, I know I certainly want the answer to this. In 2015, just before leaving office, Barack Obama gave Pearson Publishing a no-bid contract worth $350 million to print Common Core materials and administer this new wave curriculum across the United States. Common Core. This is well-documented, folks, and was considered a groundbreaking amount of money at the time. $350 million taxpayer dollars came from the taxpayers at the Department of Education, went right to Obama's Race to the Top initiative. This is the, what became Common Core. That company got that huge swath of money to do a bunch of things that our entire team, and I'm saying this seriously, we searched today and we had a really hard time finding $350 million worth of tangible product in exchange for that money. I'm sure this is all a coincidence, but sure enough, Barack Obama got a $65 million book deal right after he left office from a connected company. Weird. Now, to be as clear as possible, Pearson Publishing was paid for Common Core, but Penguin Random House Publishing did the Obama d book deal. But according to Investment Watch, these two companies are financially connected. They share equity in each other. The $65 million that Obama got is more than book deals for Bill Clinton, who got $15 million, Hillary Clinton, who got $14 million, George W. Bush, who got $10 million, combined. So was the book that great? No, they lost a ton of money on it. Again, I'm sure that's all just a coincidence. Look, if you think Michelle Obama wants to or even has answers to questions like this, no. She wants to sip Mai Tais by her pool in Hawaii and give speeches about self-empowerment. She doesn't want to deal with Iran or North Korea. <clears throat> when they left the White House, they never expected to make a run for the White House ever again. They have to live the most hypocritical lifestyle compared to what they preach for you and I. And now they throw it in our faces. It's going to be interesting. Look, they did this during COVID. They threw parties. And I, I don't know how they understand that people, the American people, just don't want to put up with this. You don't think the American people are going to see what the Obamas and how they live contrary to every policy they pushed on us? Her candidacy is dead on arrival. Democrats got real problems on their hands. Either way, Joe Biden, he's not going to leave willingly. Gavin Newsom and his hair gel won't win a single state off the coast. And Michelle Obama, not a great option either. But I'm here for it.